Okay, we're live. So, welcome everybody. This is Bradley Benner with Semantic Mastery, and I have Adam on with me today, and Marco to help me kind of, kind of produce this event. So, we're glad everybody's here. Adam and Marco. I don't know if Marco's back yet, but Adam, you can say hi. Hey, everybody. This is Adam. How's it going? Cool. And so today we're going to go through uh, what I think is a really awesome plugin that I've been using um, for the last few months to kind of. It's kind of a secret weapon that I've been using to kind of help me to identify some low-hanging fruit keywords so that it makes my job a hell of a lot easier for video SEO and for other monetization methods of which we will talk about today. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the um, slides that I have prepared and we'll get right into this. So this is the SERP Shaker demo build out and strategy. I promised a lot of you guys that were on the webinar last week that I would show you more about it today and go through an actual, uh, you know, a partial build so that you guys can see the, how it works and, and how, I, how I set it up and everything else. So what we're going to cover today is why we use this, uh, potential results, how to build sites, strategy, resources, and then Q&A. Okay? So we've got a lot to cover today um, that we're going to try to do this. We don't want this to turn into a really, really long webinar, so we're going to try to get through this as quickly as possible. One second. Let me make sure that I got my mic set to the right setting. I do not. Does this sound better now? Sounds the same. Sounds good, though. Okay. Okay, um, so I would ask that everybody leave their questions. Uh, you know, you can ask questions during the webinar, but we're going to answer the questions at the end so that I can get through this um, quickly. I want to try to respect everybody's time today and just show you how I do this, how I put it together, strategy, all that, and then we'll, we'll answer some Q&A at the end, uh, time permitting. That way everybody that um, is watching this can see how it's done without a bunch of questions being asked that may not pertain to everybody. Okay, so just keep in mind that I'll be answering questions towards the end. So why we use the SERP Shaker plugin? Um, I use the plugin to identify keywords to uh, that are what I call low-hanging fruit, so opportunities and keywords that I might not have known about otherwise. And we talked about this before when I mentioned that when it comes to niche selection or keyword selection, which is one of the most important things of any kind of SEO campaign. We talk a lot about video SEO here at Semantic Mastery, especially on the front end. Um, as mastermind members, we get into a hell of a lot more, uh, you know, nitty-gritty stuff and, you know, website SEO, local SEO, that kind of thing. But on the front end, we talk a lot about video SEO because it's just more friendly. It's easier to do for people that are trying to get into SEO or that might not have the success that they are seeking. Um, it's just a quick way to monetize. So. When, when talking about that, one of the most important things in any SEO campaign, but you know, for video SEO as well, is to identify keywords or, or, key, or keyword selection. And so when it comes to video SEO, though, if we're going to be testing keywords, you know, all the research in the world doesn't, isn't going to tell you whether or not for sure you can rank for a keyword. Unless, of course, there are videos already ranked on page one for the keywords that you're targeting. In that case, then yes, you can rank for a video or for that keyword. Okay, you've just got to out SEO the your competition, which uh, you know if you use the methods we teach you, that's not going to be a problem. But for keywords that aren't uh, that aren't showing videos on the first page of Google for already, then it's it's really gonna it's gonna come down to testing okay there are certain key indicators that you can look for that are gonna say or, or you know make it more likely that your videos will rank but without truly testing you're never really gonna know and so when it comes to video SEO if you're going to test keywords then you've got to upload a video and then for every keyword that you want to test you've got to uh, make it a little bit more you know you gotta make it unique whether it's just adding a few seconds to the file or changing the background music or whatever you've gotta make the file unique because if it can't be the exact same file or YouTube won't allow it it'll you know flag it as a, as a duplicate on, and, uh, and it won't allow you to upload it you can also live stream or do hangouts on air. I prefer to live stream and when you live stream you the same video um, is going to be unique every time so that cuts down on that being a drawback uh, or a hurdle um, because every time you live stream it's going to be unique so that's you know that's one one way to get around it but regardless of even if you're even if you have all of that covered it's still going to take time okay whereas with this plugin that I'm going to demonstrate today we are able to check for literally dozens or even hundreds of keywords um, in a very very short amount of time to determine whether or not they're going to rank and when I say identify keywords and in the next bullet is identify locations it's because 
if you're targeting keywords and obviously like let's say a, a major metropolitan area it's going to be more um, competitive right so it's going to be tougher to rank for those anyways no matter what the keyword is generally um, if it's in a more populated area for, for the most part not always the case every now and then you'll get lucky and you'll find what I call golden niches and we're going to talk about that later to, today as well but one thing that you can do with the SERP Shaker plugin is you can identify locations by finding all of the areas within and all of the cities and or towns within a specific area and I'm going to show you guys today how I do it by county and then actually create the same keyword but targeting all the different locations at one time so that you can see which ones are going to surface the quickest and when you start to build out silos like you're going to see today with the site but you can also silo in YouTube you can build silos in YouTube with playlists then you can start to rank for even the more competitive terms in the more populated or more competitive areas okay by building out the supporting articles or supporting videos if you're doing video SEO uh, to boost the main keyword that wh which you would call the top of your silo okay so we'll get into that a little bit today as well um, we also can monetize the results once we've built one of these sites and we've seen which pages are going to surface which keywords are going to surface then we can actually monetize those as kind of a temporary monetization method okay and then we can duplicate those results with other methods which I would call more permanent solutions such as videos obviously IFTTT networks which includes web 2 and social which those will when you start to see somehow how some of these keywords rank with little to no off-page SEO at all then you know that all you, all you need to do is do a video across a network and not only will your video rank but so will your network properties which would be your web 2 and social properties and then obviously you can build a more permanent money site as well uh, that's going to you know stand for longer okay it won't it, the, the surf shaker sites there there there's always the potential that they will get uh, you know de-indexed or or penalized because there's duplicate content issues which we'll talk about today there's there's ways to prevent that or to limit the exposure but regardless these sites I don't consider these sites to be long-term sites I use them to identify what where opportunities exist that I can go exploit or take advantage of using other more permanent methods okay so this again guys this is I'm gonna teach you guys how I use this all right so the potential results we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this because I showed this before but I do want to show a few once again because I want to kind of set the stage here for you guys so <clears throat> here's a site I'm gonna put this in chat and then I'm gonna open it up in another window as well so that you guys can see this Let me just show my whole screen alright so here we are in Firefox I just cleaned it right before this um, webinar so you guys can see what I'm seeing in a clean browser let me zoom in a little bit make this bigger okay so this is what I showed you guys the other night those of you that were attending that webinar the other day um, I showed you guys that this was a site that I did about two weeks ago I built well now it's been about three weeks and this is just a portion of the site um, about six counties that I was looking at it's it's like five or six counties that I grabbed all the cities or the keywords from those cities and um, put them into rank tracker and <clears throat> started monitoring these about three weeks ago I built out like two counties so all the pages all the cities within two counties and then about um, a week uh, eight days ago I built out another three counties uh, while I was recording training videos for one of my virtual assistants so that I could get her to build out the rest of the site well since then she built out the rest of the site in fact she was able to build out the the rest of the state within three days which I was very impressed with that because it being her first time but regardless I didn't start tracking any of the other areas in the state but I did just uh, track the initial results and this was again you can see the date that this report was run which was five days ago from today and this was a brand new site with zero, uh, well, I'm sorry, a one domain authority of one and a page authority of one. It was on a brand new domain. This was not an expired domain. This was a brand new registered domain. And you can see that I was able to, with no off page SEO, just strictly on page, build out these pages and rank where, which you're seeing here, which is not bad, okay, especially for such a young site. All right. The point that I'm going to be making today is that you can see that anywhere, if any one of these WordPress pages or posts, show up on the first two pages of Google it gives you a pretty good indication that those keywords are going to rank very easily for videos okay and, and also additional things like web twos 
All right, so that's going to be from uh, four days or five days ago. That's that site. Now here, I re-ran re this report today to see what kind of changes have been made, uh, or you know what what difference um, you know a few days has made. And this is going to be normal. You're going to see this, guys. This is the this, so this was the same site. It's just run today, so five days later. And you can see that we had some pages that have dropped out of the index, and some pages that have um, be you know now show up in the index and we've had some that have jumped up a lot and some that have jumped you know dropped a whole lot but this is normal remember it's a brand new site it's now uh, three weeks three weeks old and so and without doing any off-page SEO at all you can see that this is normal it's going through the Google dance okay but then what happens is so I just wanted to show you guys that this is normal so don't expect for you guys to build out um, search shaker sites if you decide to uh, jump on this plugin to build out these sites and then um, you know expect to have killer results like what I'm going to show you here in just a moment with uh, golden niche sites it's going to happen from time to time but what I found is that with these sites if you build these out just let them go just don't start tracking your rankings and looking at them every day because you know <laughs> you've got better things to do with your time and trust me you're going to see them dancing a whole lot but what you do is you let them sit for several weeks, 30 days, you know, five weeks, something like that. Let them sit. And the ones that rank really quickly and easily, you can go ahead and start monetizing those if you'd like. But what I like to do is let them sit and, and kind of marinate for a while, okay? And then I come back and I take a look at them 30 days out after the site has been complete, you know, built um, to 100% complete. Then I like to come back about 30 days later and check the rankings then because those are the keywords that you're going to see the ones that have surfaced at that point are really going to be your most sta stable keywords that you want to go target. All right, and, and I'm blurring this out because this is one of the I'm going to um, for those of you that stay on for the entire webinar today at the end of the webinar I'm going to give out some gold niches. I've done research on a lot of different niches and I, and and I'm going to talk about gold niches in a minute those being the easiest like slam dunk no SEO competition whatsoever but monetizable niches. And at the very end of this webinar, I'm going to give away some golden niches because I've done research on many of them, and I honestly, I'm just not going to be able to work on all of them. So I'm going to I've hand selected the ones that I want to work on, on which of I'm not going to reveal, but then some of them I am going to reveal this uh, at the end of this webinar, so you guys can start to target them and see results. I mean, instantly. <laughs> okay, so just keep in mind. All right, so here's another niche that I I do a lot of work in um, in my local area. I'm going to paste this into chat as well. I mentioned this the other day. This one is what is in the tree service industry. Um, I, guys, this is a great industry to be in, just in case you didn't know, because there's a lot of money in tree services. Uh, there are very high margins, very low cost. In other words, there's not a lot of material costs in tree in, in the tree service industry. It's mostly all 100% labor, and the you know to remove trees costs a lot of money. So this is a great industry to be in for lead gen, and that's where I do a lot of lead gen work is in the tree service industry. And I showed this the other day during the members only webinar, or the um, I'm sorry, the advanced strategy webinar for IFTTT <coughs> SEO Academy uh, members. And this is one that I built out. Um, I don't know, I'd say in like August of last year. And this is when I was first testing this plugin, and um, that's why I don't mind if you guys take a look at this because I built this site wrong. It wasn't siloed properly. I tried to silo it. It just it was poorly done because I was learning how to use the plugin okay but you can see that I ran this report four days ago and I have not touched the site since the day that I built it and you can see look at these rankings guys I mean a lot, some of these keywords aren't the you know the, the most traffic driving keywords of, for sure but some of them aren't bad like any kind of sort of tree removal or tree service keyword at all those are the ones that trust me I know this industry well people search for in this order tree service then tree removal and then tree trimming those are your three big money keywords in the tree service industry so anytime and in tree pruning would be a fourth would be the fourth so you can see that I was able to identify very quickly some low-hanging fruit using this um, SERP shaker plugin for some areas in Maryland in this case and state of Maryland uh, mm -hmm. that I that I wanted to test and target I, I do most of my work in Virginia but I was testing this area and so you can see that this was <clears throat> still a lot of pages and posts ranked with no additional work done guys other than just building the site out okay so you guys can take a look at that if you want. Like I said, the site is poorly done. What you're going to see today is going to, um, and how I build out sites is going to look a lot better. They're going to rank better, provided it's a good keyword, and you'll see um, it's just a much better build. All right, so I'm putting this one in now. This is one that's going to be what I call a golden niche, 
and I showed this the other day too. Again, I'm not going to reveal this keyword because this is one that I'm targeting nationally. But you can see here that, guys, this is one that I built out about two months ago. In fact, one of my partners, um, not from Semantic Mastery, one of my students who we were kind of JVing on a deal, um, he actually built this out with a little bit of training and um, and you can see that look at this guys it's insane this is absolutely insane we're tracking 110 keywords and I think we're in the top five for about 90 of them and in fact we're in the top three for about 80 of them <laughs> it's, it's insane okay and this is one that we what this is what I call a gold niche because we discovered this by through through testing and then we decided to check some of these keywords um, on a, uh, you know, we did this in, I'll, I'll be honest, this was in Texas. We, we checked this in Texas to begin with because it was a large state. We had a lot of territory or, or locations that we could cover. And when we saw these results, we were astounded. So we decided to go to Wikipedia and look up uh, the top U.S. cities by population, which you guys can go to Google and search that, and it will come up, the Wikipedia page, and it will show you the top 300 cities in the U.S. by population. And so then we decided to target some of those cities on that list with a, with a population of 100,000 or above. And we did video SEO uh, for, we, we basically pushed out some videos across a couple networks in some cities that we tested with a population of 100,000 plus. And we were able to rank number one and number two for every one of the cities that we tested. So we knew that we were on to something. So we're in the process right now of building a funnel. Uh, and setting up a system to where we can drive automated leads or client leads into our funnel to purchase video SEO services for this particular keyword phrase across the entire United States, preferably the top 300 cities by population. Because, guys, what have I been talking about with video SEO? I mean, at the very minimum, at the very minimum, guys, and this is on the low end, we rent the videos out for $100 a piece per, per month, right? So if you do 300 cities across the United States at $100, $100 per video per month, that's $30,000 per month. That's a pretty good income, okay, to split between two people, okay? Pretty good income. So that's why I said when you find identifying niches like this, you can, you know, it's, it's a slam dunk. And we're going to talk about some more of those, again, at the end of this webinar. I'm going to give you guys some additional golden niches that I've identified that you guys can jump on because I don't, I'm just not going to have time to get to all of them. Okay, so that's it for the examples that I want to show you guys, just kind of set the stage for what is possible. And remember, in looking at some of the other links that I just showed you, you know, they're not all going to be golden niches, guys. I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you that, you know, I don't want you to think that they're all going to be like that because they're not. But what this does is it, it, it's a, you're able to quickly identify um, keywords that are going to surface, even keywords that you might not, that might not be what I consider a golden niche. You still find opportunities within that keyword to rank, okay? And like I showed you some of those, like the site that I just built, it's a, a new site. Um, if I give it about 30 days and then come back and test and look at it, a lot of those that were sitting at page two, page three, page four will have also risen and it will be more stable. It, it will kind of settle in to where things are going to rest, okay? And that's, where I, that's when I'll start targeting those keywords, okay? So... Now what I'd like to do is talk about how to build sites. I'm going to show you a live example. This is a site that I had also built out about the same time I built out the tree service site um, when I first started. But since then, the other day, I built out a uh, partial silo so that I could show the people on the webinar from the IFTTT SEO Academy webinar we did on Thursday. Um, at the time, it was on a, a crappy host, so the site was loading really, really slow. So since then, I've moved it to Brain Matter Hosting which is the hosting we talked about, and now it loads just fine. So we're going to build out on that today, and I'm going to show you guys exactly the process of how I do it. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to pull up this link, and I want to um, go ahead and send this to you so that you can take a look at the actual... I thought I had it there. It's already pulled up. I'm going to stick this into chat so that you guys can take a look at this if you want, and then I'm going to start to build out and show you how I do this. Uh, let's see, Sandra. I see. I see Sandra saying, "Can we see one of the videos of the type of video? How sophisticated is it?" You must. I, I know I'm not supposed to be answering questions right now, but that just caught my eye. So if anybody, uh, I, I will answer that. Yes, yeah, Sandra. They're not, you know, hugely sophisticated videos. I told you what I like to do with with videos is I like to find videos that are already done for clients. If I'm, that's typically how I will do video SEO stuff. If I'm driving people into a funnel, then I'm going to sell them videos. You know, the video as well. Then what I like to do is use some sort of template. In fact, um, David Sprague has what they, he calls review commercials. 
uh, rep videos. Um, th th those are one of three templates that we're going to be using. Uh, there's two other templates, an animator, you know, an animated type doodle video, um, and then there's another one that's uh, it, it's also an animated video, but it's not like the hand drawn doodle video. It's it's more just like a, um, an animated video that uh, we get people on Odesk to create. And what's good about that is if you set up a template, a specific template with a a, a script that's a variable script, meaning you know key elements of the script can be replaced to obviously give out like to insert the business's um, information, phone number, website address, and that sort of thing. Then you can you can set up a templated system and a video guy like I've got a guy that does ten dollars per minute of animated videos. Okay. But if we're doing a two-minute video, it's 20 bucks on average. However, if we give him a template, if we're, once he's developed the template, to where all he's got to do is change out a few things, we can get the videos done for like 10 bucks, <laughs> and we'll sell them on the setup fee for $300 setup, and then $100 a month to keep them ranked. So essentially, our our overhead is very very minimal. It's it's almost it's it's like a 90% profit margin. It's ridiculous. So, anyways, um, we'll talk about that maybe later during the Q and A session. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. So the next thing, guys, that I want to share with you is I'm going to show you a um, Excel spreadsheet, and I'm going to share this with you guys today. I'm going to give it to you. This is a what I call a um, where the hell is it? The cities list. Okay. This is what I call the short codes master list. I'm going to put this in chat. You guys can download this as an Excel file. I do not recommend opening this in Google Sheets. Or Google Drive, because it um, it's such a large file, it will slow Google Drive down considerably, and so I suggest that you run this in Excel. And I'm going to show this to you. Okay, this is a list right here of all of the states and all of the cities in the United States. Okay, and there's like 40,000. Uh, let's see, there's 42,177 cities here. Okay, and this covers everything in the United States. For those of you that aren't in the U.S., I'm sorry, you'll have to make your own list. But um, <clears throat> what I do with this is I'm able to quickly gather all the details for uh, a particular state or a county, or you know, I can break it down however I want using filters in Excel. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that, okay? Because I'm going to we're going to build out a silo here for this local Pipe Pro site um, in Virginia. And you can see how I've got this built out. We can talk more about this. Um, anybody that ends up purchasing, if you guys want to talk more about exactly how I build out subdomains and things like that, we can. But that's beyond the scope of this today for the demo. But just know that I bought the domain localpipepros.com and what I will do if I was going to be, this is not the niche that I'm going after obviously or I wouldn't be showing you guys, but um, this is just a demo site. But if I was, you can see that I've got Virginia as a subdomain so obviously I'm going to be targeting cities in Virginia. So this is what I would do with the short code master list. As I would come over here and I would select um, full state and county. Okay, so I'm going to highlight those two columns and I'm going to go up to filter. And when you click filter, you can see a little drop down arrow. And now from there, I want to deselect all and then scroll down and just select Virginia. Okay, and you want to hit OK. Now it just the only thing it's showing now are these um, all of the cities that are in Virginia. Okay, but now what I want to do is I want to filter by county. Okay, so I've got county selected as well. So let me drop, click on the drop down. Let's deselect everything, and let's go with. Um, I'm just thinking of a county. Let's go with Prince. Well, we already had Prince William on that site, so let me think of another county real quick. Um, we could go with Spotsylvania County. That's a county that I'm familiar with. So let me go with that. I'm going to click on that and click OK. Now, this is good because it's only going to re return a few, um, which means it, it'll make the build a lot easier. If you guys want to see one that's a little bit bigger, let's do one that's a little bit bigger, though. Let me do that. Find one that's a little bit bigger. Also, uh, anyone who's doing anything local across many states, I would highly suggest using this list because finding one of these lists or making it yourself is quite time consuming. <laughs> Yes, download this list, guys. Uh, you have the, the link right there. Just download it, make a copy of it, whatever you got to do. All right, this list is invaluable. All right. So, anyways, now you guys can see that now we've I've got this sort of by Albemarle County, which is uh, where Charlottesville, Virginia, is located. So you can see that these are the cities within within that county. Okay. So this gives me the list over here. Now you can see that there's still a few duplicates in here, right? Because this is this is also has the zip codes, which you can see here. So obviously, bigger, larger areas are going to have more zip codes. Uh, you know, for, per city, they'll have multiple zip codes per city. 
So when that's the case, you're going to get duplicates over here. But So what I want to show you guys is how to use Google Sheets to clean that list or to filter that list. So I'm going to highlight these cities here. I'm going to copy them. And I'm going to come over here to my SS demo worksheet that I have in Google Sheets. Okay, And I'm just going to paste this into this column. All right, and then what? <clears throat> I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but there's a thing called add-ons up here. And uh, because I'm logged into my Semantic Mastery account instead of my main account, I don't have the add-on yet. So we're going to go ahead and walk through adding this as well. But where there's a button here that says Get Add-ons, we click on that. And then what I'm looking for is a add-on called Remove Duplicates. Okay, it's a free add-on. Click search. You can see it's right here. We're going to say it says free. Click on that. Add it. Say accept. Okay, now we have now we go back over here and we're going to select the um, text that we just pasted in. We're going to go up to add ons and you'll see remove duplicates here and we want to go to find duplicates or uniques. So we're going to click on that and it's going to bring this up here. And what I want to do is just click on next, find duplicates. Uh, this table does not have headers. If I had Charlotte or um, Albemarle County right here, then I would click at that my table has headers, but it doesn't. So I'm going to deselect that. I'm going to click next, and I want to delete rows. I want to delete duplicates and click finish. Because that's a small list, it does it very very quickly. This is why I say do not do not do this inside of Google Sheets because I tried to remove duplicates <laughs> in the, in uh, in Google Sheets. And it ran for like six hours one night. I'm not kidding. <laughs> so do that in Excel. All right. So now you can see this is a unique list of all the cities within Albemarle County. It removed all the duplicates. Okay. So what I would do is I'm going to come back over here into the SERP Shaker site. Guys, it's just a regular WordPress install. I've installed the plugin. And what I can show you here is that <clears throat> there's actually even a section that they have recently added to the plugin. This wasn't here. Uh, months ago when I used it and so to be honest with you I have not played with this enough to know um, how the advanced silo section of it w works because I'm so used to building out sites um, si it, you know siloed sites manually anyways that I just that's how I continue to do it so I'm sure there's training in the, um, the members area for the plugin about this but again since I, I have not used this section yet I'm not going to try to learn right now while I'm with you guys I'm just going to show you how I do it okay so what I would do is I would come up to pages first, okay? Because the first thing we're going to want to do is create a page for Albemarle County. In fact, what we could do, and, and this is, let me show you how we could do this as well. Let me come back over here, and we have the filters set up, right? Let me show you what I would do differently here. As I would deselect all, and then I would select all for counties. And now what I've got is I've got a list here of every county in Virginia, okay? So let me scroll up. We'll start here, copy that, and then we're going to copy that. And we're going to build out all these pages, these county pages at one time. So let me just stick this in another column, paste that in, and now we're going to go back to add-ons, remove duplicates. I'm just going to walk through that. You'll see that this is going to take a little bit longer because it's a bigger list. So I'm going to let this run for a few minutes, and while this runs, I'm going to come back over here. And what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to add a, a page for each one of those um, counties that are coming that that are, it's uh, cleaning the list right now. So there'll be one unique county page per per county. Okay. So one thing that this plugin does is it uses what's called short codes, and this is how this this is where the magic is in this uh, plugin. Is with short codes you can create short codes that will, uh, for each page it creates, it will grab the next item on the list, and it will create all of where where that short code exists on the page. It will only, it will replace that short code with that item from the list. Okay, and it will be the same. So if you have that short the short code, and you'll see this in a minute, but if you have that short code duplicated six times on a page it will still only display that one item from the list. It will be the same item in each six, each of those six locations. You'll see what I mean here. So if I go to short, add short code, I'm going to add Virginia counties is going to be my short code name. Okay, and we're going to come. You see, this is where we're going to paste in the short code data. So I'm going to come back over here, and it looks like 1,122 rows of duplicates were deleted. So I'm going to click close, and now you can see. 
that there is a list here of all of the counties in Virginia. I'm going to remove the ones that I had already built. So let me just open that up because I don't want duplicate county pages. And it looks like I had Fairfax County and Prince William County already built. So I'm going to come back over here and just quickly remove those. And what was the other one? Prince William right here. Okay, so now what I can do is grab this list of counties here, copy, and then I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to paste this list in here, okay? And I'm going to click Save. All right, so now you can see that I have Virginia counties as the name of the short code, all right? So if I want to go back and I want to build pages for every one of these counties all at one time, where it's going to build, how many were there? There was 133 counties with the other two that I deleted makes 135 counties in the state of Virginia. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over to Pages and I'm going to go to Add New. And then for right here, for the title, I'm going to give it the short code, which uses like the spin tax squiggly bracket. So this was, and, and you should be copying and pasting these in case there's a typo. It won't, you know... Um, I should have copied that, but instead I just typed it in. But I would suggest copying and pasting using Notepad a lot because otherwise you could typo it. But what I could say here is we offer or we provide, let's say we provide, and this is just a demo, but uh, we provide plumbing repair services in the following Virginia counties. Okay? And I would just leave it like that, and then you can see that, um, in fact, I need to do a shaker page. I was adding a new page, so forgive me, guys. Let me actually cut out of here and just put this in a notepad real fast, save it. And we need to actually build a shaker page because the shaker page is going to build everything all at once, not a standard page. So let me cut that out, and we need to go to shaker pages, add new. And you'll see how quickly this runs. This won't have a lot of data in it because it's just going to be pretty much empty. Um, but when you see what it does with the spun document, we're going to talk about how to spin documents and also some resources of where you can get some of these documents made. Um, you'll see how awesome this is. It really is. So Virginia counties and say we provide plumbing repair services in the following Virginia counties. Um, what I would do, I'm not going to do it for the sake of time here, but I would create a page title. So this is your H1 title. Okay. So this is going to be the title. This right here, because I want the slug, which is going to be the permalink, I want that to just be the county name. I do not want that to be some long name like plumbing repair services in Fairfax County. I don't want that. I want it to strictly be Fairfax County here, right, or Prince William County or Albemarle County. I want that strictly there and nothing else because that's how you should have your URLs mm -hmm. optimized, guys, when you're building siloed sites. You want them very, very short and succinct for each level of the silo, okay? So anyways, what I would do for the page title though, this is going to be your H1, right? So th then then this is you've got if you got the Yoast plugin in, which I recommend, then you have the Yoast SEO title and the Yoast meta description, right? So these are going to be the titles that show up in the search results, and this is going to be the description that shows up in the search results. So what I would suggest doing is taking some time and making a well-spun um, you know, uh, SEO title here and an SEO description, and you can use short, short codes. And you'll see that in a minute when we get into actually building out the city pages, okay? So just know that we're going to get to this in a minute. But for right now, sake of uh, speed, I'm going to skip that. All right, and the next thing we would do is we've got over here categories and tags and all that kind of stuff. Well, right now we're just building pages. So the only thing that I need to do is I want to save the draft. You need to do that with the shaker pages. You don't ever hit publish when you're building shaker pages or shaker posts. You hit save draft. And then you click on this right here, which is build pages or posts. In this case, I want it to be a pages, so my output type needs to be changed to pages. And guys, I know I'm going through this kind of quick because I want to show you guys how, how this works and what the, um, the finished result looks like. Again, there's lots of training inside of the uh, Shaker page member area, I'm sorry, the SERP Shaker plugin members area where Andreas goes through it in much more detail. All right, so let me just go ahead and click build posts and pages. And that was what, 133? Pages? Yeah, I think so. 135, 130 something. Okay, so now that's done. All right, so now if we actually go take a look at the home page and refresh, um, you're not going to see them yet because we haven't added them as categories, but let's do that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back over to categories, 
In fact, there's a plugin that I have uh, installed, and, and I think this is what the advanced silo setup in the Shaker Pages plugin area, I think this is what this will do, but I don't know for sure because I haven't tested. So I've been using another plugin that I um, used in the older version that's it's called Bulk Press. So for bulk press, I'm going to come over here and click on terms. And again, I'm pretty sure that the Surf Shaker plugin gives this functionality now, but I haven't learned how to do that yet, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm just not going to show that to you. Um, but I want to add categories, okay, that match these right here, right? So let me actually grab the whole list again. And this is You guys should know how to build silo. Well, a lot of you should know how to build silo. Um, and that one right there looks like we could have deleted that one anyways, but that's all right. In fact, we probably shouldn't have done that. Let me um, clear that real quick just so we can match it all up. All right, so I'm going to build out all of these pages, uh, category pages at the same time. So I'm going to click Add Terms. 133 terms successfully added. Now to double check it, we can go over to Posts and go look at Categories. And you can see right here that all of the categories are now, and here's the slug, right? So this is part of the permalink structure. You can see them all here. So we very, very quickly just built out the pages and the corresponding categories on the entire site, okay? So that's, that's the top of the silo. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is, is I talked about doing Albemarle County. That's what we're going to be building the pages out on, uh, the, the, which in this case are going to be posts. So <clears throat> just to give you an idea, I want to make this clear for you guys so that you don't get confused. We're going to make this. Okay, so what we're doing here, guys, is we're creating the home page structures here. Okay, then we're creating the top level pages which are also categories at the same time and then the last thing we're doing is we're creating the posts which we're going to be supporting in fact let me make this smaller but these posts right here are going to be essentially supporting articles okay right but they're all going to be unique because they're all going to be city names so these are all going to be city posts within a category so if I flatten all this real quick forgive my poor drawing skills these are all going to link to here, okay? And likewise, this is going to link, this is going to be what I call the top of the, the top of the silo, right? The silo landing page. This is going to be the county page. It's going to have a bullet list that links to each one of the city pages. So what have we done here? We've just created, I don't know how, how that one turned red, but we just created a wells, uh, an internal linking structure that's very, very powerful. Okay. Plus the SERP Shaker plugin itself, I'm going to show you this in the build in just a moment, it's going to do what is called lateral links. Okay. And lateral links are they're going to link between each other. Okay. It's not going to be a reciprocal link every time, but they're going to link like this between each other. So you get this huge internal linking structure that's built all, almost on autopilot. All right. So that said, let me get back over to Shaker Pages and we're going to start building out a post. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to go back into short codes, and we ne we now need to add the cities in a short code with, uh, with, uh, for Albemarle County. All right, so I'm going to add a new short code, and that was the first list that we cleaned. Remember, so I'm going to call this one Albemarle County Cities. Okay, and then I'm going to go grab from the worksheet here these cities right here. I'm going to paste that in, click Save. Now we have right here is going to be our short code. Let me copy that so I don't get any typos. Stick that in a notepad. And that's going to be our short code. So I'm actually going to put the little squiggly lines around it. Okay. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to go over to, um, well, let me show you what, let me talk a little bit about um, dynamic short codes and also uh, ad manager okay so if you guys take a look at the site the URL that I gave you at, at the live site um, just click on one of the let's see if we're on the home page which we are you guys should all be seeing the same thing right here plumbing repair contractor in Falls Church so if we click on that and you open up this post okay so now we're looking at this single post right if you guys take a look at the bottom paragraph right here this one right here okay and then refresh the page. You notice something? The content changed. 
See this? Every time I refresh the page, this bottom paragraph is changing. Okay, and that's what's called a dynamic shortcode. So this is what you can do: is you can stick a what's um, a super spun document, which I would say about a hundred words or so, and create what's called a dynamic shortcode. And the dynamic shortcode, and you'll see, you're going to see it in just a minute, guys. But we're going to place the dynamic shortcode at the bottom of the art the, the page. Now, the rest of this page here, this is just a spun document. It's not super spun. It's just a spun document. Okay, so there's a difference. There's a difference in levels of spin. Okay, but for dynamic shortcode, you can put us and this this part here doesn't change. At least I don't think it does. Let me double check it. Yeah, see, this part is going to stay the same, but the dynamic shortcode it's going to change every time the page loads. So what's that do? Every time Google comes and crawls this page, it's going to be a different closing paragraph, right? So it's going to look like the content's fresh. All right, and this is also what helps to keep duplicate content down. All right, but if you look at from from one post to another, these the main article is going to change too because we used a spun document, so it's going to change. It's just not going to change as dramatically as the dynamic short code paragraph does. And one thing that's cool is, um, and I tested this before, where I've done a, a dynamic short code as the opening paragraph, and then a dynamic short code as the closing paragraph, just to give it more uniqueness, which will uh, generally make the site you know last longer. Um, you can do that. You just got to make sure that you only keep the the dynamic short codes to about a hundred words or less, because if you try to add in too much, it's going to be too much of a of a strain on the server when it goes to build the pages out, and you'll crash the server or the the site will time out and that sort of thing. So it's a it's a you got you just got to be careful when you do it. And if you're building out the way that I'm showing you guys here at a county at a time, um, you guys can build out like an entire state at once if you'd like to. But the problem with that is it's not going to be siloed very well. So it's not going to you're not going to see the results that you do when you silo it out properly, okay? And the way I do it with the silos is I build them out a county at a time and that way even if you have a dynamic shortcode in this particular case I'm not going to do that because it'll take it make it'll slow the build down. But um, if we were to use a dynamic shortcode here and then a dynamic shortcode at the at the bottom here, it'll take a little bit longer to build but it'll make it more unique. Every single page will be much more unique. Okay? So just keep that in mind. But that said, Let's go back over here, and um, we want to start create a new dynamic shortcode that's going to be unique to this build that we're doing. So I'm going to click on dynamic shortcodes, and I've got a super spun document ready to go right here. Okay, and the only thing that I need to do here is that because I had this one already optimized, and this I I do everything in Notepad, guys, when I'm working on spun documents. Um, it just makes the find and replace function so much easier to use. So in this case, the only thing that I need to do here is just make one change, and that's because this was set up for Fairfax County, which is right here. I can see it. Is I can just copy Fairfax County and come over here to Find and Replace, paste that in. I can paste it in again, and then I can change this part out to just say Albemarle. And I always check on Match Case and click Replace All, and now this super spun document is ready to be used as a dynamic short code for that county, that specific county. So let me highlight all, copy, and this is the um, dynamic short code, so I'm going to call this Albemarle Dynamic. Okay, and then we can paste that in. Sure, uh, the spin tax and all is fine. You just want to make sure that under the spinnable selection here, you select yes, and you click create update. Okay, and so now you can see, um, and I was playing with opening and closing paragraphs before, but for this build, just for sake of time, we're just going to use the closing paragraph, so I just named it Albemarle Dynamic. If I'm doing opening and closing, you can see how I've got Fairfax opening and Fairfax closing, that sort of thing, but in this case, I'm just going to use this very quickly here. Now, we're going to get into the build here in just a minute after I show you the ad, um, what's called the ad manager as well, and this is this is important for monetization and we're going to talk about that in just a moment but you can see that I have what's called a full shaker page already ready to go so this is the entire page all of the content that I'm going to need to build out these pages that I've already optimized I've got everything filled out every to where it's basically like a find and replace worksheet for me and this is what makes it so easy like I gave this to my outsource or my BA um, with the training videos where I prepared this ahead of time for her and then I showed her just to use find and replace and to create these short codes and then just do uh, find and replace to replace them and that's how she was able to build the entire state of Florida out in three days okay for her very first time by the way um, I suspect that after the next couple weeks she'll be building three and four states out per week 
okay because it's because if you have it set up like this so in this case I'm going to go to edit and go to replace and I'm going to replace the dynamic section with this one that I just created so you can see up here that I have dynamic short code closing and opening but in this case I'm just going to replace the closing so I'm going to copy that and stick this in here for the find and I'm going to click match case replace all okay so now where that short code was which by the way the, the closing short code is down here at the bottom of the document you can see right here is the dynamic short code right here see that that's where that that short code goes alright so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about ad manager real quick because this is how we monetize now guys if you take a look we'll go back over here and take a look at this one as an example you can see that there's a photo right here right this is a photo I just pulled off of Google um, Google images and I uploaded it and this is where we we create this this is also a short code okay and what's cool about this is if you make a unique short code for your images and that's what we're gonna do in ad manager here then all we have to do is go into the ad manager you can see that's this right here and if I clicked edit then I could come back up here and edit this image with a graphic that I had designed on Fiverr for example that would have like for uh, let's say that in Fairfax County I was renting the entire county of shaker pages out to Joe's plumbing then I could have a graphic made remember this is just a placeholder for now but if I had a graphic made that said uh, looking for plumbing repair services call Joe's plumbing now uh, for fast service you know five 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 you know what I'm saying phone number or click here this can also th think about this guys right now I have this clickable clicking up to the top of the silo page but this could also be edited right here to be a clickable link over to the clients you know whoever you're gonna rent this to over to their website obviously you'd want to know follow the link but you could make this a clickable ad that has a call to action and a phone number so this is how you monetize these pages guys with what's called ad manager so this is just a placeholder but what I do is I make if you could take a look at this, the short code here you can see that I make um, ad manager short codes that are specific to each county that way if I decide to monetize this site instead of just using it to identify keywords remember if I end up ranking dozens of pages why not also monetize those pages right so this gives me the ability to go out and swap that image out very very quickly unique specific to a, uh, a particular county so that I can rent the entire county out all the pages to a, a contractor or whatever okay so that's what this ad manager is about so let me go back up here and go to ad manager I'm gonna add new alright so we're gonna call this one Albemarle ads Okay, so right here I'm just going to select in there to get my cursor to show up. I'm going to click on Add Media. I have already uploaded this into uh, the media the media library, so it's here. I'm just going to use the same image. It doesn't matter. Remember, this is just a placeholder. But what you'll notice is over here in the alt text section, guys. What do we have here? We have a short code, right? So this is how you can SEO your images too. So what I want to do is add my Albemarle County short code here, so that my alt text is also optimized. So let me go back and grab that. All right, and then the last thing is the alignment. I like to leave line left, and you guys can see. By the way, I'm just using this default WordPress theme because it doesn't make any sense, guys, to go in and set up a nice theme and all that. Look, if you end up ranking a bunch of pages and you want to come back in and op, you know, change the theme out to something that's more like a call to action type theme, local business theme, or whatever, that's fine. You're more than welcome to do that. But for purely testing purposes, don't don't do any extra work than necessary. Do the bare minimum. To, to determine where your keyword your opportunities are and then you can go back in and you can make changes if you'd like so I'm just using this default theme and it actually sticks out really well this image so it kinda grabs the eye so what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna select um, alignment left and custom URL and in this case I wanna link back up to the page that I created until we have somebody that rents it out in which case I'll go back and edit it so the, the page is gonna be Albemarle County right let's just double check it to make sure it's correct And here's that image right here. Here's the page that I created. Which, by the way, once we've created all the cities, we come back in here and we put a bullet list of the cities within Albemarle County and make each one of the bullets linkable. So that's what we were going back talking about here, right? So that's what we're going to do after those cities pages are built. So I'm just going to copy this URL out of the address bar and I'm going to come back over here and paste this in. I've got it full size, so I'm going to insert in the post. 
will show up here. And what we want to do is click Create Ad. Okay, and now here is my new short code. So I'm going to copy this and go back to my Full Shaker page worksheet. Come back up to the top, edit, replace. We're going to put this down here. And then we're going to find the ad from here. And that's why I put everything right up here at the top. Copy that, paste it in, and click replace all. Okay, so now that's just replaced the short code for that image, which, by the way, if we scroll down here, you're going to see that's the ad. this is the short code right there. You see that? That's the short, that's the ad short code. Now I'm going to remove this because this is the dynamic um, for the opening paragraph of which I've removed for this build. So I just wanted to remove that out of there. So the next thing that we're going to do, guys, is we're going to, um, for the slug, I need to replace that as well. So let me do that real quick. In fact, this is um, Albemarle County Cities. So that's going to be this one. So I'm just going to do a find and replace because we're going to need to do that anyways. I suggest always doing the find and replace on this page in uh, particular. Like I said, guys, I use Notepad for everything when doing this kind of work. So click replace all. Now anywhere that that um, short code had been on the page, it's now been replaced. So the last thing we need to do is the shaker page category, which is going to be um, Albemarle County, which I have not created that yet. So we need to go back and do that, which is fine. Let's go back over to short codes. And I've actually tried just typing in the county in that in, in certain areas, and it, it didn't work for me. It might have been something I did wrong. So instead, what I do is I just go ahead and add a, a short code with just the county itself. Um, in this case, what are we doing? We're doing, uh, let's see, Fairfax County. Okay, so Albemarle County. So I'm going to click Save, and you can see that there's only one item in there, but it gives me the ability to um, put that short code in. Because, like I said, I had tried just typing that out in certain locations, and it didn't it didn't work like I wanted it to. And it might have been something that I had done, but instead I just add this. It just takes a moment, so we'll stick that in the um, squiggly lines around it. Copy this. Replace all. Okay, so then the only last thing we got to do is we got to make sure that um, at the bottom we have a couple other areas where, where we're using other short codes, which we'll talk about in the page build here in just a minute. In fact, let's just jump over there and I'll show that to you. So we're going to go to Shaker Pages, Add New. All right, and so right here for the slug, this is the page, this is going to be the actual URL, right? Uh, this is going to be the, so this will be. Virginia.localpipepros.com forward slash Albemarle County forward slash, and now I want just the city name here. All right, so for here, we've already replaced it. All right, so I'm going to put the short code here called Albemarle County Cities. I'm going to paste this in here, and then right here, I want to paste in all of my content that I have on this sheet. However, because I have H3 tags right here, I'm going to make sure that I paste this in in the text editor, okay? Um, and by the way, guys, if you make a mistake, they added a really cool function that wasn't there originally, but um, when after you've built the pages and posts, if you make a mistake, this button right here, that after you've built them, this will change, the, the text on here will change to delete pages and posts, and you can come in here and just click a button, and it will delete all the pages that you just made so that you can make your edits and then click the build button again, and it will build them out again. So it's not like if you build out 150 pages all at once and you make an you made a mistake that you have to go through and edit every page individually. All you have to do is click the delete button and it will delete. And we'll we'll, we'll kind of walk through that in a minute. But um, what I want to do is before I actually copy and paste, I just want to make sure that all of my short codes have the proper um, county in there. In this case, it does. Okay, I can see Albemarle ads. If we scroll down, there should be a YouTube. Um, this is Albemarle County Cities, VA. That's right. This is the YouTube short code. If we go back over here, guys, just to show you, um, Andreas coded in some really cool stuff here. This is a weather widget, and you guys can see that right here. If we go back to just any one of these posts, you'll see the weather widget is down here. And why did he code this in there? Well, because it just gives additional code on the page that you can get a geographic uh, modifier in, such as Falls Church in this case, right? Then there's the... Um, this is the insert to Google Map, 
which is another short code, and that's what this is right here. And look at this. It says false church. And what are we doing? We're adding Google code to the page. That's a good thing. And then there's also the uh, insert YouTube videos, and you can see that that's what is right here. Okay. And so this is the video short code right here, which, in fact, if we were to just build this out individually, let me just show you. If we just click on this, all it's going to it's asking for is spin tax right here for keywords, uh, which can inc without including city short codes, it's to keep it broad. So you just put keywords in here, and that way it'll go out and actually find videos with those keywords in there and insert them. But the actual title on the next on the next screen, if we click OK, you see that. Um, if I had inserted stuff in there, I've already got it built out in here, so I'm not going to go through it. But then you can put your uh, city short code in here too, so it will optimize it, and that's how you, what you see right here. Okay, so this is actually spun text. On the next page, it might be plumbing company, and then in Falls Church VA, that's going to be the same every uh, for uh, you know just because uh, for each city, it's going to be the 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 proper city. Let's put it that way. All right, so let me just go ahead and cancel that because we're not going to do that since I have it built into the text document. All right, so I just want to scroll down and double check the Google Map right here. That's correct because that's why we use find and replace, right? Scroll down, we'll take a look. The last thing we want to look at the weather short code, which is here, and that looks fine. And the last thing is the uh, related posts, which will be related posts within that category. And if we take a look at the bottom of this post, guys, this is what I was talking about in the graphic that I did. Um, in fact, that should have probably been, well, plumbing repair was my main keyword. Um, I would suggest working on just one, one main keyword and changing, like, the uh, additional keyword. You can see, like, this is specialist and company. Remember, guys, this is just a demo. I would spend more time coming up with some additional spin text there. But this is right here where these uh, lateral links come into play, Okay. So that's what these are. All right. So that said, we're ready to go ahead and copy and paste this. So I'm going to come back up to the top here where it uh, starts at the body of the content and grab the H3 tag, and I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page right here where I've got it broke up with asterisks. We're going to copy that, come back over here, go to Text Editor, paste that in, okay? And then I'm going to come back and click on Visual, and you can see that that's the H tag there. Let's see. It looks like, yep, yeah, that's it. That looks good. All right, so next thing I want to do is I want to scroll down very quickly, and I want to add the shaker page category. And if you guys remember, at the very top of the screen here, I have everything all ready to go, so where I can just copy and paste. So I'm going to copy this, paste it in. Um, for the categories, I want to make sure that I grab select the proper category because this is what's going to give us our silo. Okay, for tags, I've already got a tag short code right here that I'd put together, which is going to give me uh, five tags, four, four or five tags. I can't remember how I had it set up. But I paste that in and click Add, and you can see that there's, okay, it's four tags, and they're spun. So each, each time the uh, post is created, it's going to be a different set of four tags. Okay, and again, I would spend more time, this is, again, this is a demo, but I would spend more time making this, um, a very well thought out tag spin tax so that it would come out very unique on each post. Okay. All right. So the next thing that I want to do is I'd come down here to this is what I was talking about. You guys would see the H1 page title, the Yoast SEO and the Yoast description. I have that down at the bottom of the page here on my worksheet. Okay. So I'm going to copy this. And I think there's a little bit of a bug with this plugin. Um, and again, I haven't tested it enough recently because I just handed it to an outsourcer so she's doing it for me but I'll show you what I mean what I do is I copy these three and I paste them in and, and this is what I was talking about spinning this guys okay and um, <clears throat> then what you do is you come over and click on save draft and it, 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 before you hit the build pages button you click on save draft and for whatever reason after it saves the draft you come it comes down and this has been cleaned out cleared out and I'm not sure why I don't know if that's a bug or what or if you only have to insert it right before you click the build button so I just w what I showed her to do because I didn't know otherwise was just to click it and uh, just add it in a second time okay and then click the build pages button so <clears throat> if you wanted to limit the number like let's say that you were going after it let's say for example you weren't doing a county build and you wanted to do an entire state and you had a list of you know 300 cities um, but you wanted to test the build first before building out 300 cities and then finding out that you had a mistake, which isn't a big deal because you can delete all of them. Um, but it would take a while for those 300 pages to build. 
So what you could do is to test it first is you could just say that you only want to build out like let's say 10 pages. And then you click that and it's only going to build 10 and then you can go look at the finished product to make sure that it's uh you know it was it was done right and then you come back and click the delete button and then go ahead and build all of them or you make edits or changes first and then build them, okay? In this case, I'm just going to assume that it's right and I'm ready to build. So let's just make sure everything's in place. Looks like it is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click build pages and posts. And this shouldn't take long because the list was uh, only 15 cities. So, and this is where hosting um, plays a big role, guys. If you guys have, if you're trying to do this on a shared host, which like most cheap shared hosts, it's going to take forever or it will time out. Um, in fact, it could even uh, like boot you out like... Um, what is it called? A bad gateway 502 error. There's a lot of different troubles that can happen if you're on a shared host that's overloaded already, and most cheap hosts are going to be overloaded already. Okay, so just keep that in mind. This is where having a good host is important. There is also a way that, and they teach this inside the members area for the plugin, that, that you can set up a local host. So essentially, like a server, it's called Womp Server on your own desktop. So it's a, you know, it's a, it's, it's a virtual server on your desktop. And then you can build out pages there, and then all you do is clone the site and install it on your domain. And if you're going to be doing big builds, that's what I suggest you do. But if you're just building out counties at a time like this, it's not necessary. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to refresh, and we should see a recent post change. Let's take a look at them. And you can see Albemarle County is now in the county list. And let's see, did I click on it? Maybe I didn't. Here we go. So now, guys, you can see that this is the new... Um, page that we just built out. Here's the short code, the ad short code. Let's go scroll through it. You can see plumbing repair in Whitehall VA, right? You can take a look at the URL structure, guys. It's nice and clean. It's not over-optimized. This is a perfect silo structure here, guys. You see that? You scroll down, we've got the Google map here. Scroll down a little bit further, we got the weather widget. Then down here, we've got our links to our other um, cities within the same category, which is going to be Albemarle County. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner here, if you scroll on all of those, it's all in the same county. You see that? That's a perfect internal linking structure, guys. The only thing that I didn't show you was that inside here, there is also what's called the next page and the previous page link, which if I wanted to, I could come down here and select in the content itself and somewhere where there's a keyword um, occurrence. Like, for example, this one right here says Albemarle City's Virginia Plumbing Contractor. If I wanted to, I could have made a next page link like this, and, and what that would do is it would put another internal link from within the content that would link to the previous page, and then the next one could be to the, to the next page. Okay, so it's just another internal linking structure. Personally, um, you can do that, and it's, it's entirely up to you if you want to. It, it, it doesn't hurt, but since I've got the internal linking structure taken care of down here, to me it's not necessary. Okay, but if you, you, know, you can do either one or both if you'd like, all right? But you can see that this is a really, really well siloed out site. So the next thing that we would do is we would jump back over here. Let me cancel that. By the way, guys, if you made a mistake, you see this? This delete uh, built pages or posts. If I was to click this right now, it would delete just the pages in this category from this shaker page. It would clear, clear them all out, clear them right out, the slugs and everything. It permanently deletes them so that I could come back in here and make some edits. Like So, for example, if I wanted to add the next page and previous page links, I could do that in here. I could click delete first, then I come back and add the next page and previous page links in the content, which will be contextual links, and then click build pages and posts again, and they would be rebuilt with the links in place. But I'm not going to for this, because uh, we're going to move on. Um, I do want to show you the last part of this, which is real, going... Real quick, too. Bradley's uh, being pretty modest here. What I mean, it's a lot of details. I know what it seems like going through this, and you see you've got to put the you know spin tax in the right place, do this, do that. But it's been less than an hour... He's got a county built out, and now it's just rinse and repeat. That's right. And so it's built out. It's ready to go. So you could knock out a huge site in a short amount of time. That's right. So, yeah, not to lose sight of that. That it, it's a you got to put in the work up front, but man, it pays off big time. Well, and the thing about that, guys, is like this is where all your work is right here, right? You, it takes you just once you get the hang of this, you can build one of the, what I call a full shaker page, right? It's just a text document. But you get this set up right, and that's where all your work is going to be, is getting this set up right. Once it's set up right, it's copy and paste. It's, it's find and replace, copy and paste, right? That's it. And you can build out, and like I said, my, my VA, she's a rock star, but I gave it to her on uh, last m Monday, and this is the first time she ever did this, because I've been putting this off for months. 
and I gave it to her, and she built the whole entire state of Florida out in three days, in under three days, for her very first time, because all she did was follow exactly what I'm showing you guys here, okay? So keep that in mind. You can build them out very quickly. By the way, one other thing I want to point out before we um, do the bullet list for the page, and then we're going to move on, is right here, this is the featured image of the post. And I have a plugin on the site that actually pulls the featured image from uh, the video. It's called Video Thumbnails. And that's fine, but what I'm saying is, now remember we talked about monetization, right? So if we wanted to monetize this by selling this ad space to a, to a contractor, which we could do, for, I mean, even, guys, even if it was cheap, like I showed you guys the results earlier of um, what I called a gold niche, like this one here. Like, for example, we could sell, like, let's just say that we rented each one of those ads, those pages out for, like, let's, guys, let's just, let's just say $10 a month, right? We'll give you a, we'll, we'll, we'll replace the image on there for $10 a month. And I know that's way low, but I'm just, just for, I'm, I'm just trying to give you guys an idea of how, how easy it is to monetize these and how you can make money. There's like 90 terms here that are ranked in the top three, or like 85, that took us next to no time, and if we were to rent them out for $10 a month, you know, you're talking about an $850, $900 dollars a month paycheck from that, this. You see that? Very, very easy. And who, who's going to say no to $10 a month, especially when you're ranked number one, right? I mean, guys, again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it for that cheap, but I'm just giving you an example of what you could do. So, this being the featured image. Now remember, this is this is the default WordPress theme, and that's why I suggest using this because this is actually a pretty good theme for what we're doing. Um, but what what you would do here is you could also have an ad. The the ad you you would just swap out the featured image with the ad here, as well. So you'd have this great big image. Now if you go to a content, in fact, you could even have an ad uh, graphic made that's generic and says, "Want to see your company name here?" Have your phone number right here, real large, and make it clickable to, and it goes to your website, da da da. And then you contact businesses and you say, hey, go do a Google search for this term plus city. So your service plus your city. Do a Google search. Oh yeah, well we're in number one, number two, number three, whatever. And click on that listing. You see that listing? Click on it. They click on it and they'll see a big call to action. Hey, want? Do you want to be here? Right, so that's just another way to monetize it. Is you can have a generic image made that's selling this ad space. And then you can contact whether it's phone call or via email or whatever, and say, "Hey, go take a look." And this is, uh, you know, you can rent this space. Rent, rent me. You know what I mean? So, anyways, let me come back over here, and we're at the pages, and we're just going to finish this out, and then we're going to move on because we're already an hour and ten minutes in, and I want to keep this down. Uh, I'd like to close this up in about twenty minutes if possible. So, the next thing I'm going to do is come over here and add my bullet points. Which let me just grab the list of cities. And in this case, I would have to um, go through and manually do all this, and that's why I always suggest having outsourcers do this kind of thing, guys. So in the in the meantime, I'm just going to go ahead and stop it right here, and just go ahead and click update. By the way, I would highlight this and click on link, and you're going to see that the new um, posts that we just created are going to be at the top of the list, anyways, because they were just published. So I'm going to click Charlottesville, come through here and select those, and I'll just stop it here. But I would do that for all of them. And then what I would do is at the bottom of the paste page here, I would put another line of text that says, um, you know, call Virginia Local Pipe Pros for all your plumbing repair needs. And in Virginia Local Pipe Pros, I would highlight that and make that a clickable link back to the home page. Okay, because if we're looking at this silo structure here, we've got a really, really good internal linking structure from here but nothing to the home page. Well, this is that page we're on right here, right? That's this page right here. And so what I would do is I would have a link at the bottom of every one of these county pages that link up to the home page, which would provide us with this. Whoops. See what I'm saying? So that would give us our entire linking structure for the entire site. So you guys get the point. All right, so I'm just going to click Update. And then I would go back to Menus. And typically what I would do in this case... Um, is I would put a list, like right here, because I, this is just a demo, but what I would do here is I would create another page, a regular page, and I would call it service areas, and that would be the link up here in the navigation bar, and it would click to the service, you'd click service area page and would open up another page, and on that page I would have a list of all the counties in Virginia, and I would say, and it would not be part of the silo structure, it's what's called a navigational page only, 
Okay, but it would it would say we service all of the following counties in Virginia, or you know we provide plumbing services for all the following counties in Virginia. Then I would have a bullet list or a table so that I could have rows, right? Like rows and columns. Probably would do a table with 135 because otherwise it would be a really long page. But I would do rows or a table that has all of the counties listed. They would be clickable links, and that would link over to the top of the silo, which would be the start of the silo. In this case, like for example, Fairfax County. You guys see that? And oh, by the way, this just here's an example of what I was just talking about. Okay, so that's how I would do that. You guys saw how very quickly we were able to build out these pages, um, and that was you know an entire county. And that was actually a small county. Um, there are cer certain counties, like for example, Fairfax is like actually like 23 cities. I only did 10 as part of the demo from the other day, but um, you know you can. There's certain counties that have lots and lots of cities, and you can still build them out in the same amount of time. It just takes the build process a few minutes extra when the server's working. Okay. So um, I'm going to move on. If that's cool, is there any specific questions about that, Adam? Um, well, let's just say if you guys got some questions, go ahead and pop them into chat, and then we'll uh, come back in like two or three minutes and start going through them. Because we're going to get through a couple more slides really quickly here. I'm going to talk about strategy. We talked about already about keyword testing, right? So this is how we test the keywords. Now, obviously, guys, you know, again, it's you're still going to need some front end work, which is going to be to determine which keywords you want to target. All right, this this plugin isn't going to give you those keywords. I'm going to give you some ideas at the end of this presentation, hopefully in a few minutes, um, that you guys can go target that I know are golden niches. Okay, but you guys should also be thinking about discovering your own golden niches because if all of you start competing for the same keywords, you're gonna, there's going to be some overlap. All right, so I would suggest looking for these kind of um, keywords. Now, what are what are the criteria for finding? Um, Keywords to target. Well, obviously, you you want to look for. In my opinion, you know, in what I'm going to be sharing with you guys are all service-based type keywords because I work in the contractor market. That's that's the niche that I've um, the most comfortable with and been the most familiar with, and they're the ones that generally will buy leads the, the you know the fastest. It's an effective. Um, it's a good niche to be in when you're working in the SEO and the lead gen business. So that's why I, I always will suggest contractor keywords. But it's it, you know it's not unique to that. You guys can select any niche at all that you're comfortable with or have an interest in or whatever. But what I would suggest looking for is stuff that has a high margin. For example, when I got my start on the lead gen business, um, the first site I ever built was for carpet cleaning. Well, carpet cleaning has low margins. Okay, They're very, very small profit margins in carpet cleaning business. So it's much harder to monetize leads to a carpet cleaning business for any substantial amount of money Okay, or to rent them you know, or lease them a uh, a ranked website for a flat monthly fee for anything more than you know a small amount because there's their profit margins are small. So I always suggest going after, and I learned this through trial and error, but going after pro um, industries that have higher profit margins. So that's why I mentioned tree services, guys, because that's got a really really high profit margin. So that's why I like that that industry. But there's additional ones too, okay? And, and again, we're going to point out some of them. But keep that in mind when you're doing it. And it doesn't mean you can't target stuff with smaller margins. It just 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 be aware that you're going to probably generate less money from those, and that's fine. Because remember, if you can find something that's very easy to rank for, even if it provides less overall money, you know, per lead or per site ranked or per page ranked, however you decide to monetize it. Um, if it's very easy, then you can just make it up for in, in, in volume. All right. So the other strategy, the other parts of this is market testing, the viability. So for example, if it, it, we just talked about just now, if you know, thinking about your own keywords and thinking about new markets, uh, new new keywords to 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 test this in. Okay, that you want to go into monetizing, and it, if you don't know for sure if it's a good market to enter, this is a great strategy for testing the viability. Meaning, test your keywords using this method. Um, when the pages start to rank, you can start contacting potential, you know, people to lease, pe you know, potential renters or potential lead buyers, right? And 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 offer it to them. And this will give you the this will be your viability test because if you catch a lot of resistance, then either your pricing's too high or it's just a market that's not going to monetize. Okay, so this gives you the ability to quickly identify keywords and then to go try to you know attempt to monetize them by contacting, prospecting. And seeing what kind of resistance you get or acceptance you get. Okay, so this is another way to test viability. And in monetization, are the keywords sellable? Are you able to sell ad space or, or lead gen? Are you able to sell the leads? Remember, lead gen is the more profitable model than than selling ad space or renting or leasing. Um, lead gen is more profitable than those. However, it's a lot more management. 
Okay, and so I suggest for people starting out to start off with these particular sites, selling ad space or renting the pages. Um, and then you can also you do the videos, like I said. Uh, you know, once you've identified the, the easy, the low-hanging fruit, you can go back and you can rank videos, you can rank web twos, you can build a more permanent solution with a you know a, a, a more um, permanent WordPress money site. And you can rent all of those out on a flat monthly fee, or you can uh, sell leads. I suggest when you're starting out that you do the rental model and then you move into or transition into lead gen once you start generating revenue because it's again it's more management it's more headache and it requires more capital investment on your end because you're gonna need things like additional uh, tracking phone numbers I use a call center I pay a lot of money every month to have all my calls routed into a call center and then they route or dispatch the phone calls to my contractors it's an additional service that I add um, and that's really really expensive it's worth it but it's expensive, all right. So I suggest just starting off selling ad space with these um, and renting them on a monthly basis. Okay, so resources, guys. Where do I get the articles to do it? Um, I'm going to give you a couple links here that I had saved and ready for you guys. That wasn't the right sheet. Just one moment. Bradley, if you can't just uh, send them to me, and I'm going to post them. Whenever you're posting in there, and chat is not showing up for them for some reason. It wasn't showing up. Yeah, but I can copy and paste them in, and it's working. I don't know why, but uh, just send them to me, and I'll pop them in there. All right, I'll stick them in um, chat. It's showing you as offline, Adam. Huh, well, I'm there, I promise. <laughs> All right, um, take a look at that, because I wanted to talk about um, articles. Um, I go to I Need Articles for these articles, um, uh, and I Need Articles is a, a service by Jonathan Ledger. And in fact, we could log in very quickly and I could show you um, what I get from there. But you guys can go anywhere you want. I'm just telling you where I go to get these articles. And I, it's, I need articles. Just one second. Okay, so I go here and um, I log in for one moment. Let me pause the screen. Okay. So you go into onion articles. This is where I get them. I found that this is this is about the most effective um, for the cost. Go into onion articles. You know, load some money into there, um, and then you go to request articles right here. Um, it's free to sign up, guys, and so and then it just costs you per article. You put your keyword in here. So let's just say I was going to go after plumbing repair. By the way, plumbing repair is not a really good keyword for this. Um, it's a bit too broad. If you get into some more um, narrow stuff like water heater repair, for example, um, faucet repair, those are all better keywords than just plumbing repair. It's a bit too general. But so if you put the keyword in here, and then what I do is I come down and I it just one article is all you need. I go with about 800 words, okay. And then what I do is I select um, the writer must have in-depth ex ex experience. I check on that and then or check that and then I select down here from it should be home and family, there should be plumbing. In this case there's plumbing. I try to find the right category. And then what I like to do is I like to add the guaranteed four or five star writers only. If you take a look, the article is going to be about sixteen dollars and forty cents or whatever, sixteen bucks right there. So it cost me sixteen dollars. And we're going to use the same article for every pace or every post on the entire site, guys. So it's sixteen bucks one time. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll order that and you got to agree to the terms, whatever, you hit submit request. You're going to get the article back and they're going to give you the um, standard version and then a version that's spun. I do not suggest that you use their spun version um, at all. I suggest that you go spin it yourself with a spinning service. I typically, um, the one that I use is Article Rewriter. I'm sure a lot of you guys also do that, but, or I'm sorry, Spin Rewriter. Um, if we log into here, click on Rewrite Your Articles. You're going to paste your article in here. However, what I suggest, because when you get, if you get the spun document back from my need um, articles, it's going to be a crappy spin. Trust me. Okay, and you don't want to use that because that's going to lower the overall ability of your pages to rank. Because Google is smart enough now to be able to determine spun text on a, on you know if it's not spun really well, where you manually you know keep hitting the the, the respin button and, and making sure that all of the synonyms and everything match up right. You, you got to make sure that everything is, sounds and reads well. If it doesn't, the Panda algorithm will, will detect it. Trust me. So what I do is I take the original article and I paste it into here and then what I do is I go through the um, uh, the rewriting process here and let's just see if I can just find a um, seed article really quick. Um, 
you know what I'll do is I'll just grab and this is what they teach um, let's see using articles we're just gonna grab like a, a paragraph of text guys so just give me one moment um, if you're doing these purely for if you don't plan on monetizing any of the shaker pages themselves guys you can do this where you just copy an article from somewhere um, and then spin it and use that that's fine but what I like my my strategy guys is that I try to make the site stick for as long as possible so that I can make money from it right I don't just use it just to identify keywords I try to also monetize the results so that's what I suggest doing is that you you know but if you wanted to if you don't want to spend the money on the article if you're doing it strictly to just identify keywords uh, that rank easy then by all means just come over to easy and articles or find another article directory that's probably not scraped as much and just grab a, a piece of text from there or an article from there and paste it in but this is what I want to show you what I do is I go to the settings I turn this down to only suggestions that you're really confident about um, and then I click on start the rewriting process I let it write instead of doing the one touch rewrite which will give you like a full spun document I like to just do the, the uh, for, for these particularly, for specifically, I, I, I go through it and do this to where it's only going to spin, um, let's see, it doesn't spin it a whole lot is what, what my point is. So let's say, okay. You can see it's it's going through. It, went, it will go through and spin it like line by line, but you can see this is not a super spun document at all. So the 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 level of uniqueness isn't going to be as great, but it's going to read a hell of a lot better. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is click the final step, and now if we go take a look at it and we generate the unique version, what I would do is I would spend some time going through here and making sure that each time you click spin, you try to identify areas that aren't reading properly and clean them up. That's what I suggest doing. Or what what else I suggest is always um, finding an outsourcer that's good that's good at this sort of thing and let them do it for you. And I'm going to share a resource with you in just a moment for that as well. But once I've checked it and make sure that it's pretty it's pretty good, then I would copy that text and that would be what you would use as the body of the article. The dynamic short code you're going to need to get a super spun document for that, and I'm going to share a res um, a resource for that as well. So let me go back to the presentation for a moment. Um, super spinning for dynamic short codes. Um, that's what I'm going to show you now. So spinner, I suggest you use article rewriter or uh, uh, spin rewriter. Um, if you don't have that, there's a link for it that Adam should have put in chat. Um, if you wanted to get pick that up, it's a good service. It's not that expensive. The next thing is this is let's see that's Source Dynasty Alex Becker. I was looking at that. He's running YouTube ads directly to that squeeze page. It's funny. <laughs> hey Bradley, real quick, can you either email him or do something? I don't know what's going on. I'm I never got him from you. Okay, in just a second. I'll send them to you in a minute, guys. Um, let me grab the right URL for first. Here we go. Okay, so Odesk, guys. I'm going to share. Um, I just did a. I, I did a search for you guys on Odesk, and I just copied the search URL. Um, so you guys can take a look at this. It might ask me to actually sign in. No, it didn't. Okay, so I'm going to share this with you guys. Um, this. Well, maybe it does require me to be signed in. You guys, if you if it might require you to be signed in, and if that's the case, just sign in first. When, if you're going to click on this link, and we'll double check it here in just a second, because it I had um, saved this earlier to where it would take you right to a good list of article spinning VAs. Okay, there we go. There's 403 freelancers here. Okay, that are good at spinning. Um, you know, obviously, what I would suggest doing, guys, if you're going to this, this especially for uh, this the super spun document, is try to contact some people that have. Um, you know, I've got it to where it's four and a half to five stars, anyways. But look at the prices here, guys: three thirty three an hour, four dollars an hour, four forty four an hour, five dollars an hour. You guys, these these are like people that are really good at spinning. What I would suggest doing is hiring two or three of them to spin one document for you. And then selecting the best one out of there. I would share with you my super spun, uh, my my super spinner, <laughs> but um, he he's backed up all the time, and it's hard enough for me to get content out of him for my own projects, or I would share him with you. Okay, 
So let me just paste this in. Let's see, Adam, you want me to email you real quick, right? Yeah, just having issues with that. Also, can you try something? I'm going to try kind of a live test here. A bunch, several people have said that the screen's a little blurry, which I think is just due to the resizing. Um, but can you try blowing up your screen a little bit by, I don't know what it is, with Chrome, like Control Plus or something? Okay, just a minute. Yeah, once you get that stuff done. Well, the replay should be clearer. It should be anyways. It will, um, definitely. And at least you can select the resolution and blow it up if you oh, want to. I hope to. so. Anyways, um, I had the camera. Damn it. Well, that's my fault. I should have had the cameraman set to where it wasn't showing these little images down here. And yeah. That was my fault. Um, sorry, guys. It is what it is, but let me see. If uh, I no, it, it, it also d depends on your resolution and screen size because I'm seeing it just fine. Yeah, but you're also in the, as a presenter. So the, everyone else is watching it. They see those three little images. In the bottom left, in the bottom right corner, and it makes the whole rest of the uh, screen smaller. So, and that was my fault for not setting the um, cameraman function to just show the large image. So I apologize for that, guys. But it is what it is. All right, Adam, I just sent that to you. All right, so let me get through this because we're running behind um, as usual. Super spinning for dynamic short codes, phone numbers, guys. If you're going to be using um, for doing lead gen, um, I would suggest getting you know trackable phone numbers. Um, I use CallFire mainly because I got so many of them, uh, but for if you're just going to do a few of them, Vumber is a good alternative. V-U-M-B-E-R, you can go to V-U-M-B-E-R.com. CallFire is the same thing, CallFire.com. You guys can check on pricing for phone numbers and that sort of thing. I even suggest just having a couple um, virtual phone numbers, even if you're planning on renting the pages instead of doing uh, lead gen. I suggest using uh, a couple, having a couple tracking numbers that you just use over and over again, so that when you first set up the pages, you can have tracking phone numbers on, like the ad graphic that we talked about, uh, so that you can, you know, show people how you can redirect phone calls to them, or even put the phone number with a redirect to potential prospects that you're going to contact about renting the pages, and so that you can make, you know, you can go in the back office and see the analytics and see that phone calls have been made to your tracking number that are going to their phone number and then you can call them up and say hey by the way I sent you three phone calls this week um, for free so I wondered if you were interested in keeping a service like that going I can show you where those phone calls originated from and then you show them the page and you can say look we can do either a paper call basis or you can rent this page from me with your phone number on it for a flat monthly fee right and that's how you guys monetize that like I said if you're just doing a few numbers Vumber is probably the better route to go if you're going to be doing lots of numbers, I would go with CallFire or a similar service. There's one like Twilio. I'm not real familiar with Twilio because I've just been using CallFire for like the last four years, four and a half years. So, um, again, those are the, mine, uh, the ones that I suggest. Fiverr, guys, if you want to get um, some ads made, and whether they're for the gen generic ads um, when you're first setting up the pages or if you want to get an, uh, banner ads made for your prospective clients when, you know, when somebody agrees to, to rent from you, just go to Fiverr. That's what I do. Um, I, I just go to Fiverr and get the gigs done there. It's cheap. It's easy. They're back to me in about three days generally, and they usually turn out really good. Okay. So the Q&A, we're going to take some questions, guys. It's actually an hour and a half. I was really hoping not to go this long today, but uh, it is what it is. Um, if you guys are interested in the plug-in, go to semanticmastery.com forward slash SERP shaker, and there is a $30 off coupon. It, when you guys, if you purchase the plug-in, just type in Brad SERPs, B-R-A-D-S-E-R-P-S, uh, when you go to at, on the JVZoo page, you'll see a coupon code area, and if you type in Brad Serps, you'll get $30 off the front end. There's also an upsell or the pro version, which is basically the developer version of the plugin, which is only required if you plan on installing this on customer or client sites, or if you plan on flipping the sites, like selling the sites after you've built them, then you will need the developer version. However, if you guys have been following us for long, I tell you over and over and over again to own the asset and lease it out, right? So that it's your asset. You own it. You're building your empire. You're, you know what I mean? And if that's the case, you only need the front-end plugin. All right? Like, I'm not selling any of my Serp Shaker sites. I'm renting the pages out. All right? So just keep that in mind. If you guys plan on doing this for clients on their sites, or you plan on selling the sites, then you're going to need the developer version. But if you're going to just rent them out or do lead gen where you own the asset, then you just need the front-end offer. Okay? So now I will take some uh, questions and answers, and in fact, let me let me give out a couple. Do you guys want the uh, bonus, the gold niches right now, or do you want to wait until after some questions have been answered? 
Yeah, let's do it right now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we'll, we'll answer a few questions, and then we're going to wrap it up. All right, so here are some gold niches, guys, that I have identified and I have tested, and I know for 100% certainty that these are incredibly easy to rank for. Um, and these are, like I said, I've done a lot of testing in the contractor industry, and I've just uh, identified several um, gold niches, but I cannot, I cannot possibly do all of them, and so that really makes no sense for me to hold these, uh, you know, you know, keep these quiet, um, and I can share them with you guys because this will, this will, if, if any of you are interested in doing the contractor industry, these are some that are incredibly easy to rank for. There's little to no uh, SEO competition for these keywords. Okay, generators. I like this one. Um, I come from an electrical background, electrical contracting background, so that's probably the reason why I deal with contractors mainly. But also, they're you know they're easy easy to monetize leads. But generators is a great one because it's more seasonal. Some a lot of a lot of contractor leads are seasonal, but this is seasonal for like the dead of winter or that or for thunderstorms in the summer. Right? These are when you're going to get the, your surge of traffic. But if you're renting on a flat monthly fee, um, let's put it this way: with generators and and I put all the sub the the bullet points there underneath because those are sub terms or long tail terms. So home generators, standby generators, backup generators, power generators, electric generators. There's also gas generators. Um, liquid propane or propane generators, those are all different types of terms that you can add for long tails. But generators rank very, very easily. Again, I've tested every one of these, and they are viable. They are easy to rank for, low, low, low competition. Generators, the reason why I like that one is because I know from being in that industry that the average profit margin is about $2,500 for a, general, a, a whole house or whole home generator installation. Okay, that's about a $2,500 profit margin. So if you were to rent a page out or a video, and remember, the main reason why I create these SERP Shaker pages are to, to identify the keywords that are easy to rank for. I've done it for this. Okay, then if you were able to rank a video very easily for and rent it for $100 a month, then it's $1,200 for a year. In fact, you could give a potential prospect a deal where they, I don't work on contracts, but I don't. I just all my clients are month to month, and the reason why is because if they're not happy, I want them to be able to leave without any question. And if I'm doing my job properly and pr providing them uh, results, then they're going to be happy to pay me anyways. So I typically don't work on contract, but you could do something like where you could say, you know what, if you sign up for a year, we'll give you a year for a thousand dollars, so you get two months for free. And so my point is, is you can th the way that you can sell this is you can say, look, you know, it's twelve, it's a hundred dollars a month. If you got one lead that turned into a job and you make an average of $2,500 in profit after all expenses, right, that's profit on a, on a generator installation, then you've actually just paid for one lead. You've paid for two years of my service. That's why I go after the high margin stuff for the most part. Drain cleaning, that now I know that might sound contradictory because drain cleaning is not that much of a high, it's not a really a high margin business. But um, you know you can rent that for less. I, I would do something a lot less, but it's an easy market to target. Here are some long tails for that: commercial drain cleaning, grease trap cleaning. That's another one. Um, another term for that is like hydrogenning. That's getting a little bit too narrow in my opinion. But these type of terms right here, these are services that they get, especially in more urban areas, they get um, a lot of traffic on those terms, and they're not very competitive at all. Okay, so you can rank for these terms very, very easily. I would just rent these on a lower fee. Or if you're doing a pay per call basis, it would be you know less per call. Attic fans. This is another one. It's not a real high margin, but it is incredibly easy to rank for. And in fact, solar attic fans is becoming more and more popular because you know everybody's going green. Um, and so that's a term that you can get in on now. I've tested that recently, and that's a that's an easy easy to rank for term. Um, these are you're going to sell these to roofing contractors, by the way. Okay, roofing contractors are going to be the ones that will purchase these leads, but it's a very, very easy. You know, you guys, I've talked about emergency and 24-hour, like that, any any kind of um, service where you can add 24-hour emergency. Those are all good as well, but those are pretty obvious, so that's why I didn't point those out here on this list. But attic fans, uh, roofing contractors will do those. Not real high margin, but they're really easy to rank for. So again, you can make it up for uh, in volume by just ranking a ton of them. You know. Um, outdoor pest control, I have a client in this niche. Uh, mosquito control and tick control, they rank incredibly easy. And that's, once again, that's a that's a seasonal thing. It's real heavy in the spring. During the summer, it slows down. And then during the winter and the fall you know, fall and winter months, um, there's pretty much no business at all. 
but they're really, really easy to rank for. And I know these guys because I have clients in this industry that um, during the early spring, you know, the end of winter, early spring months, they spend a ton of money on AdWords, a ton of money on AdWords because they try to capture all the business up front. And so if you can rank videos for them um, early on in the season, like right now would be a good time to start producing videos in either one of these keywords or both of these keywords and in contacting these businesses, outdoor pest control companies, and you rent them out. Again, you can rent them out for a flat fee for the entire year or you can rent them on a seasonal basis. Say we'll rent them to you from you know March or April through October or September, okay? And it's going to cost you you know six hundred dollars for those six months, something like that. They'll right. gladly pay you for that, especially if you can show them results. Bradley, I'm dragging you kicking and screaming to uh, Q and A. Okay, Q and A. Let's do it, guys. It's four thirty-five. Right. Uh, let's see. So the first question was uh, one back we ha had a little while ago. Austin was asking, and I think this is a good question. It might help other people, which is why I'm bringing this up. Um, what uh, would you say is really needed for somebody starting from scratch uh, to do a local lead gen site or sites? Assuming, you know, in your mind, what's the most important thing? So we're talking about SERP Shaker. That's obviously the great, a great way to, to test and maybe get started with that. But, And I told him my own answer, but I'm interested what you think, you know, as far as, you know, do you need spinning software? Do you need, you know, a, a just kick-ass server or what can you do? Well, no. If you're if you're just getting started and you want to and you're interested in the Surfshaker plugin, you you if you hire out the 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 spin, you don't need a spinning software, right? So, like, if you hire somebody on Odesk to do the spun document for you and everything, then no, you don't need spinning software. If you're going to be doing lots of them, then yeah, you would. But the, the bare minimum is you would need an article, right? You're going to need the plugin, a domain, a hosting account. You can use shared hosting. Just keep in mind, guys, that if you're doing the build on the shared hosting, um you can run into problems, especially if it's a really cheap shared host. I don't ever recommend getting cheap hosting, guys. <laughs> go with go with decent hosting. But if you've got a decent hosting account, then you could do the build there. But like I said, in the actual training for the uh, plugin itself from the developers, uh, they show you how to set up what's called a you know a local host on your desktop, and you can do the build there, and then you just copy the um, the um, clone the site and install it on your domain on your hosting account. The only deal with that is you can't add to the site later. Well, you can, but you're, then you're dealing with the hosting issues again, the build process on, on, on cheap hosting. So that's why I suggest if you're going to be doing SERP Shaker sites to get a decent host. Okay, Brain Matter Hosting, we talked about this last week. Brain Matter Hosting, um, that's the, the developers who created this plugin. That's their hosting. So it is actually perfectly optimized for this. But if you don't want that, there's also, uh, I recommend Liquid Web. I've used Liquid Web for many years now um, for my money site hosting, and they're a good hosting provider. But for the bare minimum, you need a good hosting account. Um, you need the, you know, to have a spun document if you're not going to have a spinner yourself. And then uh, really that's all you need. You, once you rank it, um, by the way, guys, I talk about tracking rankings a, a little bit when I showed you some screenshots. I don't recommend you know, getting a big rank tracker service um, and tracking everything. I would select counties at a time and tracking those to see how, you know, how well they perform. And then you can kind of get an educated guess of how well other counties are going to perform because otherwise you could spend a ton of money on just rank tracking services. So as far as a bare minimum, like I said, good hosting, a domain, uh, somebody that can spin documents well for you, and that's really all you need to get started. Okay, so oh, can you back up one slide? Somebody was asking for the, uh, I think the codes. If you can just leave it there while we're talking. Okay. Okay. Um, let me see. I'm scrolling back through here. Um, CJ was asking about. Um, sorry, I'm gonna find this, but it had to do with how you're. Oh, crap. There it is. How are you linking from the post to page? Are you 301 in categories, or how is that working? So I'm just yeah, reading. Yeah, you sorry. Yeah, you would. You, uh, I'd use a plugin called Simple 301 Redirects. Okay. Okay, and then you just uh, redirect from the category page to the actual page itself. Does that make sense? Sounds good. Yeah, it's not done on the demo site here, but um, but yes, that's what I would do. I'd just do a simple 301 redirect, but the plugin makes it very, very simple, and you just redirect the category page to the actual page itself. Okay? Gotcha. Um, all right, Adam... Uh, Patel was asking about new tricks for finding right kind of keywords that do well with these sites, long tails, dot, dot, dot. Uh, we'll get with him in the mastermind. Yes. Um, yeah, Adam, and Adam and I need to chat about this anyway. So. Yeah. so, Adam, if you're still listening, we'll get with you afterwards. Um, okay, here we go. Coming up. Uh, Jeff was asking Cloudflare, question mark, what's it for? Do we need it? 
Well, Cloudflare is free, guys. I mean, you can have paid versions of it, but yeah, Cloudflare is it's a DNS service. Okay, so you can use Cloudflare. You can use Amazon Route 53. Um, it's a DNS server essentially, and it it's 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 really cool and it's free, and you can do a lot of really cool things using Cloudflare or Route 50, Amazon Route 53. So, do you need it? No, but I recommend you use it anyways. Um, I use I use a DNS server, a third-party DNS server for every, all, all of my site builds now. Everything I do, okay. And again, Amazon Route 53. It'll cost you pennies per month. Um, for Cloudflare, you can use their free accounts, and you can have dozens of domains in their free accounts. Sounds good. Uh, let's see. Jeff was asking, Brain Matter hosting individual IP addresses? Question mark. I'm not sure what he's asking. Well, that's probably he's asking about. Brain Matter has like a 25 IP package. Oh, I think it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty-five dollars a month. That's more for like PBN hosting and stuff, guys. Although it would work for this too, but they have um they have what's called a VPS, which is fifty-nine dollars a month, I think, and that's specifically for like Surf Shaker sites. But you could put up to seventy-five sites on that one hosting account, and and it's optimized for this. So just keep that in mind. Think you're paying fifty-nine dollars a month, but you could build essentially seventy-five uh, Surf Shaker sites. Think about how much money you'd be making, right? Um, they have a twenty. I think their lowest hosting package is twenty-five IPs. That's more like for like um, uh, PBN hosting and stuff. Although you can you can host regular sites there, but it's going to cost you twenty-five dollars a month. I think is what it is. Um, and in fact, if you wanted to, I would suggest if you if you're just getting started and you don't you're not ready for all that, then just go over to Liquid Web. That costs you fifteen dollars a month, but that's a really really good host, guys. And you don't want to skimp out on hosting. Okay, that's one of the worst things. You shouldn't be asking about how can I cut costs on hosting. You should be asking yourself how can I make more revenue. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. Uh, let's see another question. I think this would be a good one to post in the Facebook group. I think we have a public video about siloing with playlists in YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah, and we can go over that more on Wednesday, the Hump Day Hangouts, or um, all right. So Braulio was asking about that, so we'll post up something. Um, if we'll try to get to it before the next Hump Day Hangout, but if not, we'll definitely uh, cover that there. Yeah. Um, we talked about it Brad, yeah. Just, just, just to make sure, just, just so that everybody knows, even a VPS is shared hosting. A virtual yes. private server is shared hosting because you're still on the server uh, with somebody else. Although it's, uh, it's like in part. Marco, I can't hear you. You're coming in like. I'm this. sorry. I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Now I can. Unless, unless you're on a private. <laughs> we lost you again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Your mic's not working, dude. Yeah, it's my mic. Sorry. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm going to keep rolling with questions so we can wrap this up. Um, David was saying this will come with Trello instructions. Um, David, uh, this David's isn't... David's a mastermind uh, member, right? Is this David Ross? Because if so, David, yes, you'll have access to that. Uh, okay. Any mastermind or outsourcer training portal member will have access to the Trello board so that you can train your outsourcers how to do this. Um, I, you know, you'll have access to what I've developed for my team. Yes, but you have to be a mastermind member or an outsourcer or training portal member to get that. And James is asking, do you do any IFTTT linking with these sites? You can. However, I would suggest not. And the reason why, again, guys, because remember, you want, what you're using this for and wh wh how I use this is to identify the keywords that I'm then going to go out and syndicate videos across my IFTTT networks for, right? The reason why I say that y you could, technically, you could tie the RSS feed from your site, your Surf Shaker site, to an IFTTT network or networks. The problem is that if you're building out 23, like let's just, again, for Fairfax County, there's 23 cities in that county. And if I was to build out a, site, a, a county for that, um, and I'd, be, I'd literally be dumping 23 posts on my IFTTT network all at once. And for that, a lot of your Web2 accounts will get terminated for spam. Even though they might not be spam, which essentially they are really, but a, even if they weren't spam, they would still, by, by posting so much so quick, your, ter your accounts will get terminated. So I don't suggest doing that. I suggest just using the um, building the pages out, determine which is going to surface, identifying the good keywords, and then doing a more permanent solution like video SEO, where you're syndicating one video across your network at a time for the keywords that you want that you um, are going to rank for. Did I lose you, Adam? Nope, nope. Um, I was getting ready to answer someone else. Austin, if you can hear me, I'll uh, send you a private message here in a second. Um, Let's see. I guess we'll do a last call, guys. Uh, one more. Any, give them a minute uh, if you got any other questions. I think we're we did a pretty good job getting through them, though. Yeah, this went a lot longer. Don't they always? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> always go longer than I plan. Um, but yeah, guys. I mean, like I said, look, this is not something that you need. The, you know, I, I told you guys when you bought the uh, IFD for those of you that have that to stop buying shiny objects. And I totally stand behind those words, okay? Because I'm sure that most all of you have enough tools and enough training on your hard drive already to build a profitable business. The problem that I see. Most of most students have is or or SEOs or wannabe SEOs have is that they're constantly looking for the magic bullet. And guys, this isn't a magic bullet either. Well, what this is is a tool that will help you to identify markets that you can go in and dominate a hell of a lot quicker with a lot less work. And I like easy. I really like easy. I mean, I can do difficult stuff, but why when I can do easy stuff and make you know do more in volume? Okay. So what I'm suggesting is that if you're not in a position where you're ready to purchase this, then don't. This is an evergreen offer. It's not going anywhere. This isn't a, we're raising the price in two days and you better get in on it now. I hate those kind of tactics. I do. I absolutely hate that. And the guys, the developers behind this, they've been around for many years and I'm friends with them and they're going to be around. So if you're not ready to purchase it yet, then don't. It'll be available to you when, when it is. But I suggest that if you are getting started in this business and, and you're going to be using video SEO um, as your main source of revenue or you know your main income generator, then this is a way to cut your testing time down considerably to a fraction of what it would be under normal circumstances to where you can start generating revenue a hell of a lot faster with a lot less work. Good deal, good deal. Um, let's see, Rob is asking Bradley, will you be doing more training on the SERP shaker? Um, possibly if, uh, if, you know, if, if any of you guys that purchase and, you know, want to reach out to us and say, Hey, look, we bought the SERP shaker through your link. Would you mind giving us some additional training? Then I wouldn't mind setting up another training webinar with, with those of you that have purchased. No, I wouldn't mind it. Cool. We'll be up. Sorry. You guys can hear me. Can't you? All right. Yes. Um, typing and reading. Sandra, will SERP shaker handle foreign language sites? Yes, according to Brian, who's one of the developers that he was on with us last week, um, yes, it will. Because, again, it's just the content that you put on the page. So that's up to you if you want to spin. And she, Sandra's uh, in France, <laughs> which, by the way, on a webinar a while back, I said I said a bad word, and I said, pardon my French, and she put into the chat, that is not French. <laughs> and I forgot to tell her that I thought that was hilarious. I still giggle about that. <laughs> Let's but yes, it'll work on 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 foreign language sites. Um, okay, last question. Uh, James asked another one. Have you ever built uh, SERP shaker sites using aged or expired domains? Yeah, I have. Um, I have done that, and you can see better results with that. But the, the again, my point with the SERP shaker sites is to find the easiest to rank keywords. So it's not necessary, and also because I don't look at these sites as being long, uh, you know, sites for longevity. Like I expect at any moment for any SERP shaker site to be penalized, okay? And by and and that's why I said I don't spend a lot of time on them. I, I I um you know I expect if I can monetize them I do, and I have the intent on monetizing the sites, but I also assume that at any moment it's going to be penalized for duplicate content, right? So that's why, like I said, I just use brand new registered domains. Um, in fact, you can even go with cheap domains like um, .pw's, which I think are like three ninety nine to register. Believe it or not, those will rank too, guys. Um, and then once I've determined which keywords are going to rank easy, then I go and create a more permanent solution with either video SEO or web twos or uh, expired domains and building a money site and, and, and all of that. Cool, cool. All right, well, we're good. We're caught up. So I think uh, that's it. I don't know. You got anything else, Bradley? No, um, other than I'm sorry that the video is a little bit smaller than what I had planned because I forgot to hit that button, so I apologize for that, but it is what it is. So um, if you yeah, guys the have replay is going to be up, um, and we're gonna, it should send out an email to everybody. Even if it's not, I'm going to send out an email uh, to everyone that signed up, so you'll get at least the replay link and, and some of the resources. So yeah, if we'll you want it out. And we'll also put a link up to the replay in, uh, in our community's um, Facebook group, things like that, so you guys will all have access to it. Um, and Sandra says that she likes my French. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, hey, we appreciate you all being here. Like I said, if you guys have any additional questions, let us know. Um, I'd be happy to do some training for those of you that did purchase through our link. That's that's fine. Just let me know. Cool. Cool. Thanks, guys. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you on Wednesday. All right. Bye. Thanks.